You may have watched my other video of uh, adjusting the head bearings on this bike. Um, but as it turns out, I kept thinking, really, I should have replaced them. And although I've put everything back together, while I was ordering some other things, I thought, I'll just get a set of head bearings and do them. Now, I intend to do the least dismantling I can to get of them. That's always famous last words, isn't it? But let's see how this works out. I've already got it jacked up and strapped to the bench so it's ready to go. First thing I need to do is remove the front wheel again. That's the mudguard and brake tied out of the way. I also need to undo the brake uh, coupling here to take it off the bottom yoke. Undo the two bottom clamps on the fork uh, stanchions and the top ones and then hopefully I'll be able to slide the legs out. Now my reckoning is these will come out reasonably easy because I don't think that they've been in there for so long. Well, that's the stanchions off and to be honest as they come down 
really don't like what you see however lower down they don't look so bad at all and down where the seals are they look reasonable someone told me that or i've read somewhere that honda only actually chromed part of these stanchions so the top ends did tend to go rusty i don't know how that true that is certainly if uh, you know i'm keeping this bike for a long term i'll probably replace the stanchions but not today now i need to get the top yoke off and pull the bottom yoke off with the steering stem um, obviously lots of bits and pieces in the way i'm going to see if i can undo stuff and move it to one side also i'm going to lower it down so i can lower my arms down while i'm doing the job Gonna have to remove the ears from the headlight to move them off the bottom yoke anyway. So I'm gonna undo them and that should give me enough room to just tip it out of the way. That's one. I think there's enough bits and pieces inside the headlight for it not to fall on the floor but watch it prove me wrong probably get some to tie that up now Some of you may notice it's the same belt as I used the last time I did this job. That is absolutely by accident, but if you did notice, well done for attention to detail. Right. And if you just noticed I was going the wrong way, even more amusing. This is where my balls drop on the floor every time. I'm going to admit something here that actually absolutely fucking shocks the life out of me. There isn't actually any ball bearings in the top. That's why none fell out. That's exactly how I found it. You can see that there has been ball bearings in there, but I haven't removed any now. I've just took them out. Amazing that it felt as good as it did.
Now I would have mounted that somewhere a bit more solid, but the video was going so well. I'll probably straighten that and reuse it. Now before I go into the effort of banging these into the actual headstock, I'll just make sure that they are roughly the right size. I have had in the past where I've bought what said they were the right bearings, but one of them was wrong. The one with the wider hole in the bottom is the bottom bearing, and the one with the narrower hole is the top bearing. So I'll just measure the outside of the race and the inside roughly. I'm not going to unpack them. So soon as I've unpacked them, I can't really send them back unless I you know, can prove that they're totally wrong. So I'm just going to measure them first. So here we go. So this is 53.4 and 53.4. Quite pleased with that. This one is 48.6. And 48.56, that's near enough for me. And the middle, I have to judge this by eye. So that's about 26.25. It's that one, isn't it? Yeah, that looks good. And this one, 31.4. Yeah, it looks right to me. Okay, good to go. Put these into the freezer for a little while um, so that they're easier to fit and let's get them banged in. With this kit that I've got has come this thick washer. And I looked at their fitment guide and it makes no mention of it whatsoever. Now, looking on forums, I've seen a variety of ways that these have been used by people. One is not used at all. The danger is the bearing isn't sticking quite up high enough for the headstock not to catch on there. Um, but by not using it, which I don't think it was used originally, it's probably going to be okay. The other thing I've seen is where people have actually put these on the other side actually in the head before they put the outer race in the outer race in and um, I'm not convinced that's a good idea either what I've decided to do I'm going to use the washer that I originally said I might have to reshape I'm going to put the seal on it then I'm going to put the inner race on top of that Put it onto the stem, drive in the outer race and see how it fits. If it doesn't, then I'm going to have to drive this back off. I suspect it will come off a lot easier than the original one did. Um, I'm going to bet that I don't need to do that, but that's my fallback. I'm adding that just to give it that little bit more of a lift. That looks too much to me, but... Uh, I'm sure in the comments I'll get some interesting advice about it.
whatever reason, when the, this in the race came out, it did cock and it has caused a little bit of a lip on one side. So I'm just trying to clean it up. I'm only intending to take a little bit of a lip off, not anything else, I'm not making it any bigger. Just so that it doesn't catch the new race when it goes in. Feels a lot better now. Now when it's fully home, the tone will change slightly. I know the drift is uh, also sticking in there. Now I don't know if you can hear it, but I certainly can. There's a ring to that rather than just a dull thud. Pretty confident that's okay now. So 50 mil and it's 50 mil in there so no wonder this ends up so battered. Sticks out a bit further than I'd have expected, but that's okay. You hear the ding a dong? I do know this is not the way to pack the grease into the bearings. But I wasn't going to do that on the off chance I couldn't get them in. And I was just messing with grease all over my hands once again. This will do just as well. We'll get it in. I'll make sure there's plenty to drip down onto it. Top one while I'm uh, in a mess.
just tighten this up enough so that there's no visible play. I won't bother adjusting it fully until I get the rest of the uh, forks built up. I think it's about as tight as I need to have it at the moment. That's the bearings in. Now I've just got to sort this mess out and make sure it's all still working. So uh, let's go to time lapse. That's everything back together now. To be honest, everything stayed fine apart from one wire for an indicator, but I checked through that every connection was still good. Had to reroute the um, throttle cables, mainly because I forgot and left them on the outside when I uh, put the leg back in, but hey, not to worry. So the roller taper bearings um, should outlive the bike now, I would imagine, if long as you give them a bit of grease now and again. Let them settle in a bit of riding on the road, then I'll have a go at re tighten them down and just make sure there's no play in them. At the moment, it doesn't feel like any play, but it's amazing what happens when you've got over a few bumps on the road. Right, so thanks for watching. Uh, we have uh, lots of things going on. I've been doing the swing arm bearings as well, so you might want to watch that one. Um, if you like this kind of thing, why not subscribe? Uh, give us a thumbs up maybe as well.